Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we are going to work on a necklace made from the Bargain Bead Box Art Deco Luxe. Now this was originally going to be just one long um, video, but it got really long. So we're going to split this into two parts. This first part is the beaded necklace portion. The second part, which will come tomorrow, is the dangles. Now the dangles are sort of two parts because I had to do one part um, and then they had to sit aside for a while and come back, but they are just going to be in one full video for the dangles. And the beaded portion is going to be another, this, this first video. So let's turn down and we'll show you what we're going to do. Now this is my design, if you can see it, that I have done. Oh, maybe I can get it just a little bit smaller so you can see it better here. Okay. Now see, we've got all the beading around here, but then we've also got these three dangles. These three dangles are the first part we need to work on. So we'll, um, we'll get working on those, and then after, we'll have to put these aside to dry because this is a little bit of leather that goes up into a bead cap. So then once those are set aside to dry, we will do the stringing because these are going to go on bells. So it can go on here all right without our drops on yet. So let's get, get our beads out and we'll get started on this. Some black Softlex medium size beading wire. And now we're going to get our beads out of here. This is our extender chain, so we'll put it aside for right now. And we're going to drop our beads out. Now from my design that we have made, our bells will be like so. Then our green little pear-shaped ones, well, sort of half pear shape. Then these black barrels and some more green. Then the bales again for the second, for the smaller ones. And then the green, the black, the green on either side. Green, black, green. Now we're going to change pattern when we get to this spot and we're going to go um, to the uh, black agate. Is it this one? I think it's the smaller. This one. And then um, the little chevron in here a ball spacer and yes the other ones will have spacers I just didn't put them in right now um, pearl Big agate, another pearl, and then we'll go the opposite direction with our chevron going upwards. Come back out of there, you. Pearl, big guy, pearl, chevron. Then the black agate again. Then we're going to go with five of these little guys. Three, four, 
five. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to repeat this pattern with the black agate, the chevron, ball spacer, pearl, big agate, ball spacer, nope, pearl, ball spacer, chevron. Then of course that same pattern will be on the other side. Got some glue stuck on my finger here. Then it'll be the five little ones again. And then the two agates on either side of that. And all these lovely spacers will be going in between. Oh, these are our, our, our uh... Okay, which one of you guys is missing a ball spacer? Because we have an extra one here. Actually, an extra two. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, these bigger spa these big um, pieces will go here on the big barrel beads. the other one there we go and then we should have two for this one here as well yep let's see here medium size there's another big one medium big Now these big ones are going to go around these big agates as well. Should be one more. There it is. Now then these guys. Oh, I have two more big ones. Shouldn't have two more big ones. Well, we'll see where they go. And we have little ones now and medium sized ones as well. And these are going to go. around the other beads. For instance, this is going to have medium ones. Oh, I got two piles of mediums here. There's another medium. The little ones are gonna go between all of the little beads and the mediums will go between the others, like this one and this one. And then one, two, three, four of those, these little guys here, four more here. Oh, there's a medium in there. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, five. That's not right. And 
and we actually are going to have a media another medium on either side of these I mean a small one and the medium will go on either side so it's going to have a double up right there of a small one and a medium one and we're also going to do that here on by the chevrons I don't know, I may have a whole bunch of extra pink parts here. But let's get some wire out and we'll get started. I think I'm gonna start right here in the middle and then just do one side up, then go ahead and, and pull, cut the wire and do the other side. So we're gonna just work on the spool for this one side. So we're just gonna yank a, a portion out and I'm gonna put a bead stopper on the end so the beads don't sink into the spool. One of my pet peeves when they do that because I can't see what I've got down on that side when they're dumped into the spool. So then we're also gonna get one more thing out and that is some seed beads. Because, come on babies, come out of here. Boy, they're this tube is being a problem. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to just dump a few out because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of seed beads, probably two or three, under each one of the belts so that it doesn't take up a lot of space here So, and our other beads don't try to go under it. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put one of these spacers here too, and we're going to go, got to get, okay, the pair side goes to this, to the inner, and then it'll be a big black, a big spacer, the black, the big spacer and the pair. And this time we want it to face heading towards the bale. So turn it around. Now see with the that the spacer goes right inside the bale here even though it's not supposed to but it does. So we'll put the Spacer here anyway, put in three pearl, these uh, pearl looking uh, seed beads. These are six aughts in case you're wondering. The space bale. Still wants to slide around more than I want it to, but that's all right, it'll be fine. Come on you, sit, okay don't. And we're going to just go up the line on this side. Put these aside because I don't need them again until I put the other bale on. I'm going to change up something here. So in order to do that, we're going to have to take these off from here down. Nope, this one too. Yeah. 
Now I'm thinking I have a lot of extra little spacers here, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a double spacer right here beside the the, um, the little green bead here. So we've got this small one towards it, then we got this big one towards the barrel. And I use this big one because um, the barrel bead has got a pretty f uh, flat side here, of course, so I don't want get back up where you belong. I don't want it having too much of its face showing per se. So now we'll just do this this way. Yeah, I like that with the pattern going like this. Almost lost my spacer there. Come on, baby, go on there. There we go. Now these spacers were out of my stash, so if I end up running out because I'm putting multiples on, not a problem. I can go get some more. And I probably will need to get some more because I'm multiplying them in quite a few spots here that I don't believe were in my original design, but I like it, so that's the way it goes. In fact, I know I will because I'm using a lot more little tiny ones here and I'll need some more of those. Come on, there we go. This is a pretty one. I like this patterning on here. Got some glue stuck on my finger. <laughs> Where's your hole, baby? There we go.
just noticed these fell off screen, so let's move them back in here so we can see what we're doing some. you go on. Now we just finished this part. We're going to now go back to this pattern here, right here. So on you. Oops. Come on. My fingers or nails are getting a little long. I'm going to have to cut them pretty soon. I don't want to allow the little beads to go on. And as you can see, I'm definitely going to need to get some small spacers here. So, come on, bead, where's your hole? There we go. And we're going to put this last spacer on here. 
And I think that's why I had the ball spacer was so we could put it on this end here. So there is our one side done. So let's put a bead stopper on that so we don't lose our beads. Oop, like I would have just right there. Slide these over and then we'll put our bead stopper back on this side tightly on there. And then this is what our one side it looks like. So let's measure that, see how long it is. This is our middle portion right here. So this is going to be 12 inches, so that's going to be a 24 inch necklace, so that's going to be a really nice length. So let's cut off our other, uh, the rest of the wire we need, and we'll start doing the other side here. So in order to get the wire I need, I'm just going to take my uh, clip off of my spool and just bring it up to about where this one is, like so. Put my clip back on and we'll cut our wire right there. So, there we go. And we can now put our wire aside. So the next thing we want to do is, of course, we're going to take off this side and start doing our um, our uh, beading up this side. Now I took my uh, I used all my extras here, so we are going to just. snitch from the pile up here until we get to the point where we can't anymore. And then we will go get some more spacers. Oh, don't kink up wire. Make sure my pear bead is going the way I want it to, which it is. I don't want one of these right now because we're going to put on our last bale now. So three seed beads. And another medium. And put our bell over the top of those. And then put in our pair. Now we want the pair to be facing towards the bell. So just like so. This one we want facing away from the bale. So there we go. There is the middle, and these those pieces will hang from these three bales. So let's continue our stringing and um, till we get to the end. And then we will, well, we're going to have to go get some more spacers because I'm going to run out here, but that's all right. I knew we were going to, so it's not like it's going to be uh, a surprise. And I have, I just have a couple of my big ones left here. So I do need to go and get some more of the small and medium out. 
Looks like I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 12 of the tiny, the smallest ones, and another um, one, two, three, four, five, six of the medium ones. So I will be back in a moment as soon as I get those. Dumped out a little pile of both sizes for myself. One, two, three, four, four. So it looks like we're onto this small and then the medium and then our black agate. Then again with the medium and then the small and then to our chevron. Now I'm debating about leaving this ball spacer on the end because my crimps tend to slide into that because it has a really good good size hole. So we'll make up that decision in just a bit. So here is our necklace, other than the bottom pieces, done. Got all kinds of extra goodies here, it looks like. But there it is, isn't that pretty? So it is, did end up being, well, we've got, it'll be a little longer yet because we still have to put our clasp on. And I'm going to go for a lobster claw since um, I am going to put an extender chain on. So there is our, it is 24 inches. It will be, right now, it'll be closer to 25, of course, by the time we get all of our, um, but by the time we get the, lobster claw on and such and um, we'll get doing that one next so there's those put away I'll have to get those put away as well now here is our extender chain portion there is a small um I will have to get out a, uh, I don't think I have a lobster claw there. I'm going to have to get one out. Because this is the, what is next portion. And that is, we're going to put the pair, the little spacer, and then this little guy here. And you know, I put... That's fine. Then our chain for our extender. And then of course we have a couple of jump rings for the end here. And we need to get the lobster claw. It's a nice silver lobster claw. Oop. Don't need that many. But I do need to make sure that the lobster claw is working properly. And it is, so that's good. So there's our lobster claw. We'll need a couple of... Uh, crimp tubes. And then we will... And a... Um, Head pin. So, get a head pin out. This one's a little bent, but it's not very, not going to need very much of it, so I can straighten as much as I need. So, we'll go with the pair. the spacer and then the little bead. 
So that's going to be our dangle on the end of our extender chain. So we'll wind this guy up and put him onto the end of our chain there. Over and around and down and over, leaving a gap so that we can get our chain to slide onto here. There we go. Now I will hold it with these pliers and wrap it up. Now I'm going to just wrap this one with my fingers. Um, you can I usually use two pair of pliers, but you can wrap with just your fingers if you want to. I think that's good. So we'll clip off this excess. And now I will get my second pair of pliers because I need to tuck in that little bit of wire. Come on, Shane, get out of my way. There we go. So that baby's in. And now that one is ready to be attached to one side. So lobster claw on one side, extender chain on the other. So we'll just take one of these off. And I'm going to, well, before I do that, I guess I should get my crimp tubes. We probably only need two rather than three, but I've been known to drop them, so... <laughs> And then we also need to check to see if um, it's going to drop into this uh, bead here at the end. Because if it does, we want to, yeah, see, it just did. So we're going to remove the, um, and the bead still, in, the uh, crimp is still in there, but we'll get it out later. So we can just put our crimp tube on here, then our jump ring piece here, and go, come on you, don't go on the other side. And then we'll feed her back through. And pull her up to wherever we want, where you want it to sit. Then we'll get our crimping pliers out. I use the magical crimpers. You have a little divot here. You put your crimp tube right in the middle of that divot and squish. And then you turn it and you continue squishing until it doesn't want to squish anymore. And I think she's decided she's done. We'll do a tug test. It seems pretty good. And feed this wire through the other beads here. Then we can drop all of our stuff down to that side. Let gravity do its thing and move everything down there. Again, we're going to take off this... since the um, wire wants to fall into it. And then we'll put on our crimp tube and our other jump ring. Come back here, jump ring. And we're gonna feed it through here. Come on. Feed it through a couple beads here. I 
think that's plenty. Pull it up. Now I'm going to hold the jump ring while I pull these down. And that will pull it down easier so that it goes to where I want it. Now I want to make sure that I have this as tight as I want it, but at the same time I don't want it too tight. So we'll make sure these are all down and not got a gap somewhere. Okay, that looks like I had it down there pretty good. But we want to keep it in a curl so that when you um, crimp it, you don't crimp it so tight that you have um, no motion in it, that it's just stiff. So now that I've got this where I want it, I get the crimp tube again in the center and squish, turn, and squish. Come on, baby, stay in the center. You don't want to go off center. Until we have our little bead. Now we'll cut off this extra wire. Making sure I get the right one here and get as close up as I can. We've got that clipped off. Now the next step, see that gap I just got? I obviously was not paying attention when I did something here because I now have a gap sitting here on my on my beads. So I'm going to cut this extra little bit of wire off that wants to stay poking out here. Oh, come on, you. And the easiest way to deal with that gap, if it stays, if it's a big gap, is to put a couple of crimp covers over our crimps to um, take away that extra space. But I don't know how much is there yet, so we'll see. Mm. It's a gap, but I don't know if it's big enough to be a problem because we do want that movement. Hmm. Well, we'll decide after we get these other things put on here. So what we need to do is we need to open our jump rings up and put our lobster claw on one side and our extender chain on the other. There we go. So there is our necklace with our extender chain. Like I say, we do have a little bit of gap, but I don't think it's really bad. Um, like I say, if it bothers you, if it's too much, you can always uh, put a um, cap over the top, a crimp cap over the top of your um, your crimp, and it will it will take up some of that excess space. But it really doesn't seem to be that much. So we are most of the way done with this. What's left is to hook our our pretty pieces on the bottom. So there we go. There's our first portion of our necklace. 
um, I'm not going to bother to hold it up like I normally would because it's not complete. We will be finishing the second half tomorrow, and that is the dangles portion of our necklace. I hope you enjoy this. This has been Rose from In Rose's Garden, and we have been using Bargain Bead Boxes Art Deco Luxe. Bye-bye.